So Zuella Braveman was interrupted twice by people, you know, accusing her of being a racist in a sense, and there's a lot of hatred mm. going towards her. We have yeah. weapons that are now being sent towards Ukraine. Net migration is to top one million this year, as a lot of people fear. Andrew Bridgen joins the Reclaim Party. But more importantly, we are joined by Eloise here today, who is the young spokesperson for the Heritage Party, which fair to say is a right wing party. So it's an absolute pleasure for you to be here today. Do you want to give like a little introduction about who you are as a person and also like what what the party's about? Hi, yeah. So um I am, as you said, the young adult spokesman for the party. Um the party I would say is social conservative. Um I'm not really too invested in the whole right wing, left wing thing, but um, yeah, that we are the conservative side of the spectrum. Um, yeah, personally, I'm a tutor. I teach kids that are homeschooled. And so I've put a lot of energy towards uh, the Heritage Party because they're standing up for a lot of what I believe in. And I think it's really important that more people find out about the party and get involved. Wow, it, I love that homeschooling. I think homeschooling is incredible. Um, do you want to like talk about what the Heritage Party stand for? Because for someone on the outside who looks at the Heritage Party, they might think they're you know very right wing. Um, like even myself, when I look at the Heritage Party, they're extremely right wing on social issues. So like, what what's kind of their key philosophy, and like what would a Heritage Party government look like? Okay, well, um, the banner line is, as I'm sure you've seen, uh, freedom, family, nation. So that's freedom in terms of freedom of speech, um, freedom of choice, especially um, medically, medical choice, um, given recent years. Um, And yeah, just the freedom to live life independent from the government. family is a really important value for the heritage party i think traditionally it's quite a british value um enabling people to spend time with their families and you know you get these couples where both parents are working and we want to empower more people to have one parent stay at home and build that connection with the children i really support homeschooling um obviously and family is just such a strong foundation for a good society um and then of course the last line is nation which is basically national sovereignty and being separate from unelected global government um like the un like who organizations that are not elected officials and yet somehow they can tell our elected government what to do to their own people interesting so we would want yeah we would want Mm. national sovereignty and identity separate from that so so you spoke about family there with yes because i i know um and i actually i'm quite socially conservative as well and i love a lot of the values heritage party Mm. espouse i do disagree with a lot of them just to make that clear for anyone listening um uh, when you spoke about family um you know family is an important value if heritage party were in power would they adopt you know what hungry have i don't know if you know what they do with family first policies so like um they promote marriage and family so like you pay zero income tax if you have three or more kids um like would that be you know that because you know in a utopian world i think we can say like one person working one person not is quite like a healthy medium but how economically would heritage party achieve you know one parent yeah yeah um so i think just to point out with uh that policy that you mentioned that hungary has um what we don't want to do is encourage overpopulation um because this is the type of thing that you sometimes see with child benefits is people having a large amount of children to get those reliefs and those benefits coming in and then they might not necessarily have the capacity to care for those children appropriately um which you know is really not fair on on the children and it puts extra pressure on the state 
and um, it overpopulates the country. Um, but obviously, you know, having big families, having children is a positive thing. We just need to empower people to care for those families and support those families properly. Um, so one of the one of the main policies on the agenda would be um, I don't know if you know this, but currently couples who one parent is working and one parent is staying at home, they can only share the working parent can only share 10 percent of their tax benefit with their partner whereas we would make that 100 percent. oh right wow so yeah. tax relief incentivize work but then not mean you know people are burdened on the state so kind of a mix between hungry and <clears throat> in a sense what we have here a bit kind of yeah well it's all about finding um the balance and ensuring that we can encourage and support people to build strong families without, you know, damaging the economy without going and without being over controlling as well. Because as I was saying, one of our key values is freedom and allowing people to live independently from the state. We wouldn't want people to just be relying on the government to sort everything out for them financially, just so that they can have a big family and stay at home with them. Interesting. So it's kind of like a, libertarian hungry uh what's the word um hybrid kind of thing would you say <laughs> i don't say that i would just say that it's it's the heritage party heritage you know party. i don't think Love we that. need to fit into anyone else's labels interesting and like as a as a fellow young person yourself mm. w like you know it's very unusual i've come across you know and I speak to a decent amount of people to come across, you know, a young woman who's right wing um, politically and socially. So I guess what has actually been your journey? Because you are you must be in the UK, like the smallest percentage, because, you know, like girls I speak to are just on a different universe from your political philosophy. Like I've never met anyone like you in that sense. So, yeah, what got you to that place? It's interesting. A lot of people say that to me. They say, I've never met anyone like you. Um, uh, when I was a kid, the phrasing was, of course, you're weird. But um, as adults, we've, <laughs> we've rephrased it a bit. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm quite used to hearing that. And I think um, what it is. So I went to an all girls school and um, the school was bizarrely quite left-leaning so left-leaning parties um actually want to get rid of grammar schools and they call them elitist and all this but the grammar schools themselves support those left party left-wing parties um which is ridiculous in itself but what it meant was that there was quite a level of um indoctrination i was surrounded by people parroting these left-wing policies left and right and i you know, I almost came under the spell, if that makes sense. Like, I 100% I see where these people are coming from because I've been through the same uh, programming, if you like. Um, it just didn't work because I was asking questions and I, I would start to say things, well, what, like, why is that the case for one person and not the other? So, for instance... Um, I personally knew students at my school who identified as transgender and they were experiencing this body dysmorphia. And then another person close to me um, was suffering with anorexia and she was experiencing body dysmorphia. And I was saying, well, why is this one an illness and this one an identity? And that's where it kind of crumbled and I didn't take on those ideologies because I was seeing both sides of it and I was asking those questions and no one could answer it interesting so like kind of you being in the environment it was either you were going to go a lot down one way or the other way fascinating mm. um you speak like the heritage probably talk about freedom a lot i'm just wondering mm. socially would would they be authoritarian in a in an extent because i do see some of the um <clears throat> david what's it sorry i always mess up his second name david curtain. yeah Cur curtain i always mess up um would there be would there be like an authoritarian um structure to that like would they support gay marriage for instance the heritage party 
The Heritage Party holds that the right and true definition of marriage is between a man and a woman. Um, because our leader is a Christian and we respect Christian values as a party, and Christian values are that marriage is between a man and a woman. Obviously, every adult has the freedom to live their lives as they see fit. Um, you know, no one is causing harm to anyone. Um, so you sh is provided that that is the case, that you're not causing harm to anyone, you have the freedom to do whatever you want, and it should stay that way. Um, I, I am a bit confused in general by the concept of supporting gay marriage, like that there's accepting it, there's, you know, accepting that there are these people who want to, that there's a man who wants to spend his life with another man and they want to live together and that's their business. But supporting it just seems like a strange thing to do. Why do they need support? But like legally, legally speaking, like could a gay couple legally get married under UK law if like Heritage Party were in power? Or would that be you know, seen upon as wrong and well no, no not seen upon as wrong, but they just legally couldn't. I mean, it is already the case that they can. Mm. Um <clears throat> I can't I can't speak for whether or not that would be overturned. I do think there are a lot more immediate issues that our attention would be turned to. There are definitely things that are higher on our agenda. Um the the main reason that the government recognizes marriage is to provide financial support for couples that are having children right um and obviously that is very important supporting the next generation supporting couples that are having children um and i yeah i think that's the reason why governments recognize marriage in the first place and so a couple that is choosing to not take on that lifestyle um, wouldn't need their marriage recognised by the state anyway. You know, they're choosing to be different or, well, they are. They feel that it is true to themselves to have a different lifestyle to that. Um, and so it doesn't really make sense that they would want the state to recognize them i think it's a bit unusual to want the state to be overly involved in your life i mean i agree with you but <clears throat> the argument would be you know if you're gay and you adopt like <laughs> there's many many scenarios where it you know it does and also just the simple act of if you know if you love someone um even if you think that's wrong should they have the right to actually have that partnership like over law like someone else wouldn't say that there's a right and wrong to it um you know as i said adults are free to live their lives as they mm. see fit but the key I, thing is equality in the sense of like if you're straight you can get married but if so it's like you don't have equality because it's one rule for one one rule for the other um <clears throat> is equality the right word though because what you want when you're when you're looking to achieve equality it's to ensure that no one is discriminated against right no one is losing anything by being the way that they are right well i well i, I guess it's the semantics of what is equality for me equality is treating everyone the same so if you you know if you don't treat someone the same to me that's not equality well i treat my friends differently than i treat strangers is that not equality? Um, well, you know, you, that, there that, is yeah, no that's your possible own, way that... to treat everyone the same, is there? <laughs> well, n n yeah, but this is under law. Mm -hmm. So it's like you, you have your own personal social surroundings and stuff. And, you know, no one's saying you do this, you do that. I mean, in these times, you yeah, they are. But like, generally speaking, no. And then under law for certain issues, you know, there are broad things that everyone's treated the same on. Well, it's, so no one hmm. should lose anything under the law due to the way that they are, right? No one should be treated differently by the law, yeah? Because we don't want to disadvantage it. No one should be disadvantaged by the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Um, What is the disadvantage to not having 
the state sign off on your partnership I mean you, you but you could use the same yeah. argument of like straight people then what do you mean like if if you're in a heterosexual relationship you want to get yeah. married why are the state involved with that or are you arguing that as well, well? <laughs> as I said so as I said so there are straight couples who choose not to have official marriages um as I said, the main benefit to having the state recognise your marriage would be, um, you know, tax benefits, um, which are, which support raising a family. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think we kind of, we kind of agree. It's just there's kind of a bit of a difference on, like, um, what what we mean by equality and stuff. So that's kind of just a separation, I think, um, of, you know what yeah. what we believe in words we, we did land on that equality is that no one should be disadvantaged yeah. under the law yeah 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 we, we agree which is on absolutely that. the case yeah yeah 100 yeah, percent. um so yeah speaking of <clears throat> you know what what's happening right now is so we got mm. net migration predicted to hit over a million um by the met office and then recently today you had zuella braveman interrupted by protesters um, yeah. espousing views of you know hatred towards her for her hatred well you could argue hatred to some people's eyes towards asylum seekers and refugees um w- what's your thoughts of yeah these people storming in and also what's your view of net migration may top a million this year what's what's your thoughts of that and kind of the heritage party's thoughts well uh the biggest thought is that obviously that is a massive problem um net migration passing a million is just insane it's it's in no way sustainable we cannot keep that up we can't we can't even manage it as it is you know um i think it's interesting what's happened with the protesters today instead of i mean it it was kind of difficult to hear what they were saying Mm. in the videos but um they seemed very their arguments seemed very emotionally driven and they were just sort of saying, you hate this, you hate that. They weren't actually providing any sort of reasoning that I could hear. You know, there wasn't really any data or anything coming out. Um, I mean, yeah, what what is the argument to support over a million people coming in? I mean, I don't think that's what they, I kind of, sorry, I muddled it up in what, into one kind of story there, but like <clears throat> their argument would be- How that, policies are yeah, on illegal immigration. Yeah. yeah. So for instance, the argument is there's 160,000 people who have applied for asylum in the UK, a massive backlog. Yes. It's like one to 3% get processed within, I think, 18 months. So mm. if you do apply a leg- legally, you can't get yes. in the UK. So therefore yes. major- people are going on- boats across the channel so therefore Mm. she's saying oh wait they shouldn't come here but then also on the same page you can't even apply legally so their argument would be if you can't apply legally and you're actually in danger what are you meant to do who is in danger that the uk is the first place they reach well so for instance let's say um well majority of people it's not but let's say you're I don't know, you're fleeing, I don't know, Afghanistan or something, and, you you, you know, you're running away. And then you... uh, I'm not great at geography, but <clears throat> where do you think Afghanistan is related to the UK? Yeah, it's far away. It's not close. Mm, yeah, Far away. There are lots of safe countries you would get to before you got to the UK. But a majority of, a majority of people do, don't don't come to the uk it's only a tiny fraction that come from far away actually do end up comes to the uk and it's often because of family members etc okay. so like you know what, what would the argument be there <clears throat> well the family members that are here they presumably live and work here yeah or yeah, yeah like why are they not taking them in well that well that would be the argument they they come here they they get processed and then they do take them in but that's legal they they come here legally get processed and then get taken in by their family that's just normal migration but no but but zuella braveman's um policy now is that 
the 160,000 backlog, which is, you mm. know, well over 97% of all people applying don't get accepted within 18 months, right? So therefore, if you are actually in danger, how are you meant to come to the UK legally? It's almost impossible. Again, no one is in danger that the UK is the first country they're getting to. Um, also, do you not think that the illegal boats are slowing down the process of legal asylum uh, applications? Yeah, that's a good argument, to be fair. Um, I think that the big issue is just process incentives. So it's like, um, I'm, like I don't think, you know, people on boats does anything because you don't know who they are. They could be anyone. And then, you mm. know, they chuck their phones away. It's like, who are you? You know, it's, it's um, definitely an issue. But how, like, it, it seems a bit crazy to Ella Braveman saying we must stop the boats, but at the same time, got an absolutely ruined process incentive. It's completely backwards because it's, you're stopping both things without actual solutions, really. So, yeah, like I said, the the processing centre could be running a lot more efficiently if the immigration services were not dealing with all these illegal boats. You know, all of these unknown people trying to identify them, trying to, you know, keep them alive, sort them out. That the burden that they are putting on that system is slowing down the process for people who are trying to apply legally. Yeah, but even and if even if there weren't as many boats, but it's yeah. it's a it's a circle, isn't it? It's like you apply legally, you don't get mm. one hundred sixty thousand people apply legally, you don't get accepted. Yeah. So you've waited yeah. for over a year, you're in danger, or whatever. So that, so then you have are to. You, that, to be fair, that is a fair point. Like because you, you wouldn't really be in danger in france would you so that is a fair no. point um i yeah i guess that's true isn't it i mean it it the definition would be what is danger like if you're running away from a i know a terrorist group in your country they have links in france and countries surrounding the uk is the only country that they don't How have many safe countries have they passed through before they get to france yeah i mean that yeah there's other countries but i guess it's all about the definition of safe if you're slightly in danger does that mean you know and also as a well, you're so, I might so be you slightly say, in danger walking through the alleyways of london in the middle of the night yeah am i an asylum seeker <laughs> no if i want to go if, if i want to move to let's say sweden right right and i currently live in london i'm slightly in danger all of the time am i an asylum will sweden accept me as a, an asylum seeker well, no. well, I'll, I want to use... You're in a country that is not at war mm. or, or under terrorist rule. You're safe, legally speaking. But, that is a safe country. Mm, but as a Christian country, do you think we have a moral obligation to help those in need? Yes. I think there are a lot of people in need in this country that we should help. So you, so you don't think it's a I'm I'm look, I'm not saying we should you know well I'm actually a yeah I'm a libertarian so I'm very pro immigration <laughs> um but which I know you'll strongly disagree with you because you're social like and economic conservative from what I'm hearing um like do you think that like what I see a lot on the right is people say oh we need to help people here first but then they don't talk about kind of the issues here a lot of them can be solved by things like immigration so for instance here we have a job shortage of you know people not working in droves if we had an inf you could say you know there's culture issues you can make that argument fair enough but when it actually comes to jobs there's a lot of massive arguments to say that you know it massively helps the economy to bring in <coughs> more people what's what's your thoughts of that i disagree i do not think it helps the economy to bring in these people um, especially the ones that are coming in illegally because they're just taking for, and maybe it's just for the first few months that they're here, but they are taking and that is putting a stress on our system. That is putting a burden on our economy. And if the rates continue as they are, it is a burden we cannot handle. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's a fair argument because um, I know like, you know, if a certain percentage come in each year, even if it does benefit the economy, there's a lag and then it does actually have Australian services. 
I appreciate that. I mean, as because I'm quite a capitalist um, guy, I kind of look at it and say, you know, the market will decide type thing, which is, you know, a bit different. Um, well, t- moving on to kind of the next series, n- series, the next story um, to do with sending weapons to Ukraine. I've mm-hmm. seen David's talk, been very, very anti-Ukraine. Would you, anti, I don't know if that's, sorry if I've kind of defamed him a bit there, but from what I gather, he seems to be quite, you know, anti-Ukraine to an extent. Um, so Prime Minister... Uh, Rish- when you say Ukraine, you mean like the war, right? Yeah. yeah He's yeah. anti-war. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Just checking. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Prime Minister Rishi Sunak of the UK has promised to send hundreds of attack drones and other military hardware to Ukraine after face-to-face talks with President Vladimir Zelensky on Monday. The Ukrainian president arrived in Britain after visiting other European capitals over the weekend as he sought to shore up ahead of an anticipated counteroffense by country's military to take back the territory occupied by Russian forces. So the plan is to send more weapons and defense missiles, drones, you name it, to Ukraine. We've already sent billions. There's kind of a shift happening a bit where people are like, you know, hang on, what's happening here? What's what's the Heritage Party's take on what's happening in Ukraine? Um Zelensky, us sending billions over. Um, because personally I'm against it because it just seems insane. We're just sending billions and billions. There's no solution mm-hmm. in sight. We're funding World War Three. Seems madness, mm-hmm. but what are your thoughts? Yep. Yeah, all all the things that you've said, I completely agree with. The Heritage Party is against the war. We feel that the tensions should be de escalated. We feel it would be a very simple process to de-escalate those tensions, to go in and support negotiations. There's absolutely no reason to get involved with weapons, but we are in a position to be supporting negotiations and facilitating peace, and that is what we should be doing. We should be de-escalating those tensions and trying to stop the war. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, this is costing us money, it is costing Ukrainian lives, it is costing Russian lives. It just needs to stop. There's no reason for it. 100% 100% it's like there's no end goal that's the issue it's like we keep on sending billions over mm. and then you say well what's the end goal it's like keep fighting and even in a hypothetical situation where us sending billions over does win the war which would be fucking crazy but let's say that does happen then then what you think Putin's going to roll over and be like you I, you just funded my own destruction but I'm not going to retaliate at all like you know yeah. it's very common sense I think what's going on there and there almost is a coalition now happening with people are very right wing and very left wing so you've got Jeremy Corbyn stop the war coalition um, and yeah. from what I gather he would agree with someone like you at the Heritage Party which is fascinating yeah well I mean there are a lot of people saying we need to stop the war like you said from all sides everyone except the core government seems to be saying stop this war and it's bizarre that that should be a controversial thing to say and i've worked in schools i don't know if you see kind of like children's news media like news round there's a newspaper release called first news and they report on the war and they encourage children to like donate and like raise money. And I'm like, you're telling pe- you're telling children to fund weapons, to fund war and death. And I just think that's awful. You know, if you're going to tell them about it, it is embarrassing that we are not able to tell them this is what we're doing to create peace. This is what we're doing to build a stronger relationship with these countries. And like, as you said, we're bringing danger onto ourselves by supporting a country that e- even if it won, you know, we, we would then be Russia's enemies. Um, Putin is not the surrendering ki- type, is he? Mm. He's, he's not going to, even if he had to surrender to Ukraine, he's not going to just take it lying down. Yeah. But uh, that's uh, that's kind of a moot point because there is no way that they could win. Well, I I mean there I are no know. winners really, are there? Mm, yeah, true. Because I mean you'll just be deaf and I, like yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. There are there is no way to win this war. They just need to stop it. Hundred mm, percent, stop the war and like you know these 
the billions and billions get sent over <clears throat> more people die what's the actual mm-hmm. goal military industrial complex all of that like there's there's a much bigger picture i think that people don't talk about you know the economics of ukraine um the geopolitical sphere of things like it's not like we're going over there thinking oh you know we're great killing russians and it's really weird seeing articles by the telegraph and the guardian where it's like they show a video of just you know a guy getting blown up and it we're supposed to think that's a good thing and it's it's really messed up the desensitization and as you said like what's happening in schools as well like, that's absolutely mm-hmm. shocking had had no yeah. clue um yeah 100 <clears throat> percent. um i keep on saying 100 percent that i <laughs> <laughs> um so speaking of also um other major news that's happened so andrew bridgen ladies and gentlemen has become the first mp for the reclaim party so this is absolutely massive he announced the conference on wednesday it was really big so the mp andrew bridgen has announced he has joined lawrence fox's reclaim party after being kicked out of the conservative party the member of north west leicestershire announced the move which makes him the first reclaim party me- member of parliament and now uh, reclaim party are in a f- have an official seat in the house technically and he said, now I have reclaimed my freedom. He said, predicting that the other MPs would follow him. This is just the beginning, he said. So, and also he's suing Matt Hancock and they've already raised, I believe it is 72,000, I think in three days, which is very impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's, it's something major because now you have this, he's got a very strong constituency. I think he had 62%, you know, very strong yeah. majority. He increases vote every single election. Um, what, what are your thoughts of Andrew Bridgen? And do you, well, crazy question, but do you think he's going to be able to maintain his seat? Or do you think, you know, the media smears, people call him a racist, anti-Semitic, you name it. Do you think that all kind of put his constituents off? Or do you think there is a chance with Reclaim that he can keep his seat? Well, with um, some candidates for other small recently formed parties like the Heritage Party, some of the parties similar to us have um, in the local elections um, had people elected because their constituents know them from maybe being former members of UKIP. So those people have been re-elected because their communities, their neighbourhoods know who they are and support them as politicians, it maybe doesn't reflect support for the parties that they're currently a part of. Um, but of course, any any votes that take away from the Live Lab Com Uni Party, the, the WEF Uni Party, is a positive thing. Um, I think it will be interesting to see um, what Andrew Bridgen does in in the general election. Um, yeah, I'm 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 interested to see what happens with that. That's interesting. Um, about you know having name recognition, that means that people are more likely to vote for you, obviously, because yeah. he, he is very loved in his constituency. And if what he's saying does come to fruition before and it gets pulled off the market, then you know he's going to be a hero in that place, and he'll yeah. get champion. So I wouldn't be surprised if somehow he does actually manage to pull it out of the bag and with the money and the backing and the support on social media, like I wouldn't be surprised if he does manage to like grasp that seat. That would be absolutely massive. Wouldn't it? If he actually won the seat, Oh, that'd be incredible. It would. I, I think something that I found is appealing to people about the heritage party as we're getting more well known is that we have a very full detailed manifesto. Um, which I've not seen as be as strongly the case with some of the other parties um, that have been recently formed. Um, so I, I do have to wonder how supportive people will be of him in his new party. Um, it, I think it would have also been interesting to see how he did if he stood as an independent um, because as you said, he's he's doing fantastic things. He's very well known in his community and he has been a good MP. Um, so, I, yeah, I think it would have been interesting to see how he does, how he would have done, sorry, as an independent. Um, I don't know how much he is invested in being re-elected, though. Um, 
because he's kind of prioritizing getting the message out there about the vaccine damage um which is an amazing thing that he's doing he's prioritizing it because it is the most important thing at the moment is to stop anyone else from being hurt by it and to get justice for the people who have been hurt by it mm. yeah that's a good point i wonder if him being independent would be better i can't see it being better though because he wouldn't have the back in the conservative party and then he wouldn't have any of the resources he would have to you know independently fund what he's doing um like from social media to campaign leaflets graphics you know you name it it would cost so much money um he wouldn't have the backing of kind of professionals in a sense so i guess in that way it'd be a lot more difficult for him to do what he's going to do but he he's dying on this hill and i got so much respect to him he's threw away a cushy mm -hmm. position he had with the conservative party he could have you know got the ex the expenses paid for 80k a year in his constituency because they love him but instead he said no i'm dying on this hill and <clears throat> if it if he does win all credit to him um i want to talk like a bit back <laughs> onto like you and the heritage party um mm. like as a uh like a young woman what's your thoughts of like the current culture and everything because i speak about that on my podcast um now and again like what you know what has pushed you to homeschooling and the again the political angle you're going through right now yeah um so what led me to homeschooling really was my experience working in a school so i've always been um Ever since I left school, I've been doing private tutoring, usually on the side of my main job. Um, but I was previously working for students that were in school and just needed extra support. Um, and then I spent some time as an LSA in a primary school. Um, and this was during, not during lockdown, it was between the two lockdowns, the two times that schools were shut down. And... I just really felt that the culture in primary schools at the moment is very politically geared. Like I remember when I was in school, in primary school, I didn't know anything about what was going on. I wasn't being told what to think of the prime minister. I doubt I could have told you who the prime minister was. I didn't, you know, they weren't teaching us and maybe it would have been good to have a bit more neutral awareness. But I just felt that, like I was saying to you, the things about Newsround, um, I know of schools that have genuinely had days where they've encouraged children to dress up in Ukraine flag colours. Like, why would you encourage children to take sides in a war? And that's the sort of thing. They were encouraging children to say things like, oh, I hate Boris, but they didn't know why they were saying it. And there was... Um, like the, the COVID restrictions as well, um, teaching children with face coverings on and just the culture around that was very sort of pushing obedience and um, not really questioning anything. And I really strongly disagreed with that. Um, I felt that that wasn't really in the best interests of the children and I didn't feel like I could be a part of that. Um, and I knew people um, from being on protests against the lockdown. I know pe knew people that had taken their children out of school for the same reasons. Uh, and so I started working for them as their homeschool tutor. And um, I just got referred on and on and it became my full time job. Wow. I mean, you know, full credit to you, um, you know, young person tutoring independence. You know, it's it's, trem it's commendable. That's the word. <laughs> Thank you. I it's yeah that's very impressive so you didn't have like aspirations to go to university or that's great no i've i've never wanted to go to university i do think academically speaking um i would have enjoyed studying certain subjects at degree level however i don't feel that that's really what university is about anymore i have noticed that there are people who sort of maybe aren't high acad academic achievers and they're still being pushed to go to university to get into debt for the rest of their life 
and spend three years separated from their families and surrounded by all of this left-wing culture. And I just have to wonder if that's by design, like separating separating these young people from their families and surrounding them with people who believe certain things. I just think it's, you know, requiring a degree for jobs that don't need it and this this system that I just described being encouraging children to go into that situation. I think those two things line up to suggest something very not ideal. <laughs> hint in a hint in a conspiracy there, interesting stuff. Um I yeah, like you said you helped people in school who were struggling learning. That was me. Yeah. I was that guy who was um needed the teacher support. Like, oh, I hated school so much. And um yeah. could see someone as good as yourself getting in the education system a, a rare sight. <laughs> um it's... so uh what oh yeah, what I was gonna ask was yeah. about kind of the whole culture now because you're yeah. you seem very traditional in your views and that's so rare again. So what's your view on the current landscape of things like i'm sure you know you're a young person you're aware of like things like only fans and you know everything that's going on so like as a young woman yourself who's traditional which is again unbelievably rare what's what's your thoughts of seeing that growing up with that like did you have certain influences that could have taken you down a certain road and have you seen people like what's your take on all that yeah well um I think, you know, you you mentioned things like OnlyFans. I think that side of the culture, um, we're constantly told that that is about empowering women. Um, But I completely disagree. I think it is intended to devalue us. I mean, if you look um, historically, um, the name has just slipped my mind, but there was uh, quite a controversial um, priest in the Bible who told women to cover their heads. And, you know, people see that as a massive problem. They're like, oh, that's oppressive. But what he was actually saying was that women should be, shouldn't feel the need to display themselves. He was saying, you know, you can cover yourself here. You don't need to, you, you, you'll be valued here for more than your appearance. And I think in terms of that, you have to wonder whether there is really such a thing as traditional versus progressive or if things just cycle culturally. So we we were in the stage of, you know, valuing women for their minds and respecting them no matter how they dressed, and now we're coming back towards you will only be valued if you display yourself. Um, and I, I just think that that's the wrong direction. I think it will always naturally come back to respecting women and having women be respectable in their in their behavior and their appearance. That's fascinating. Did um, that make any sense? Yeah, no, no, it does. It I does. felt like it's I was amazing. rambling a bit there. No, 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 it's brilliant. Like what you said about being a circle of progressivism turns to regressivism. We've seen that with, may that be Mm. gender to um, race, you know, racial segregation, basing people on race Mm. used to be a bad thing. Now apparently it's a good thing. Um, We're seeing that. Yeah, like, yeah. I I see um, like advertisements for spaces that are like queer only or you know colored only and i'm like hang on a moment did people not give like did people not put themselves in danger to fight against that being the case like what is have they forgotten it's it's absolutely insane it is going it's just swinging the other way as you say Mm. like i completely agree with you there 100% like it it's so messed up and the fact it's been normalized of like people growing up today the thing about skin color constantly and all of that like it's it really is bizarre like you spoke about the WEF I heard that a few times there (laughs) I did I said the WEF uni party is uni party yeah 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 so what do you mean by that can you expand on that 
because there'll be a lot of people listening who won't know what you mean. Who are the WEF? And okay, yeah, who are you saying the the WEF? Yeah, yeah. So the World Economic Forum is one of the global organisations that I was talking about earlier. Who are non-government organisation? They are not elected, and they hold a certain amount of power or authority over elected officials. So, for instance, they have something called the Young Leaders. Um, Rishi Sunak is one of them and Liz Truss was one of them. So when there was this leadership race between those two, a lot of people were looking at that thinking, well, you're both part of the same organisation. Is there really a choice here? Maybe it's like, I don't know if you've seen the the illusion of choice thing where there's two doorways, but they lead to the same thing. Um, Yeah, it seemed a bit nonsensical that these two people who are members of the same organisation who supposedly carry the values of that organization why would they be running against each other unless it was to give us the illusion that they were more independent than they are so that has been suggested um the wef has a lot of values that the heritage party disagrees with to the point that they are an organization we have on our list if you want to be a member of the heritage party you cannot have previously been a member of the wef (laughs) Wow. Damn. So, like, <clears throat> I, I mean, I know about, you know, Klaus Schwab and all that. Um, mm-hmm. but, but, I mean, there'll be a lot of people listening. When you speak about the WEF, they say, yes. oh, you're a crackpot conspiracy theorist. What's, what's your response to that person listening? It has become something of a buzzword, something that people hear and immediately um, switch off to because they've been known to associate criticism of the WEF with a certain type of person and I think that that's very intentionally done um the media can choose to show the general public certain people criticizing the WEF who have a sort of manner of expressing themselves um that can come across quite eccentric um and some of those people that criticize the WEF believe things that I don't um but I think all all criticism of the WEF is valid. Oh, well, I'm with yeah. you there. I think, you know, a lot of people like to downplay and pretend, oh, it's just a conspiracy theory, but it's not. You know, real people, yeah. real powerful people really do meet and much yes. more and have, you know, political decisions over discourse and what goes on in this country. Um, I want yeah. to talk a bit more about the Heritage Party, if that's <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely i love talking about the heritage party love that um so like about the heritage party because i see a lot of what david tweets and Mm. it is it is quite right wing like a lot of the stuff he says is very right wing i would say um and to someone i'm not saying he's a racist but to someone who does call david and the heritage party racist what's your response to them have they seen a picture of david he's black if <laughs> well, if um if their response would be um well I can't, I can't actually really think of what their response would be to that but let's say they <laughs> say that doesn't matter then then what would you say would you, or would you so to put you at the spot be quite confrontational it's just i i think a lot of people listening will have these questions um about the heritage party oh. yeah um could your hypothetical person please elaborate on what they mean by racist? So, like, I've seen some tweets by... So, this is bad. I, I should have examples. This is ter- terrible interviewing by me. Um, but Don't like, worry. I, you're, you're doing a very realistic impression of the type of people who would say that. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> they never have examples. Oh, yeah. No, that is that is a fair point. But um, I guess... To someone who thinks kind of the rhetoric of, you know, massive social conservatism, they think kind of that's, you know, borderline racist. What's what's the party's kind of response to people like that? Well, I don't see what it has to do with race in any way. All right, well, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. I don't don't see what social conservatism has to do with race. Um, Yeah, and that, yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, That was terrible of me not to have any examples there. Um, I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying. Look, I'm not saying he is a racist. I just want to make crystal clear. I'm just saying mm. I've heard people accuse him of it before, and I just wanted to pose the question 
Um, mm. cause I, I no, don't, I mean, I've, I've yeah. heard people say that as well. And very much the way you did, they never have examples. It's, mm. it's just a, it's one of those words that they associate with our political views. They've been told anyone who believes this is racist, is sexist, is this, that, and the other. But, when when you say, well, can you give me evidence of this person being that way? They can't because it isn't true. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. I've just seen like, um, and it, you know, it's very distracting when people do chuck around the R word, the racist word. Mm. Um, it's, it's just based off, I've seen clips of people accusing me of racist. They use a clip from GB News of him talking about um, like uh, the Great Replacement and things of that nature. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, like I guess it, you know, race to call some racist is a massive deal, and when people do call some racist, it needs to actually mean something. Because nowadays, everyone calls everyone a racist. Like, yeah. you know, you could be I'm pro freedom, pro body autonomy, and all this. Like, as in to the vaccines, and then you know that's equal racism in 2023. It's it's absolutely insane. What what was the biggest um reason y- like you became a traditionist? Like, wh- why are you a traditionist um because it makes sense it it just makes it it's not that i said okay i need a set of values our oh, traditionalism that one's good it's just that those are the values that i inherently have as a person and i recognize a lot of good in our country's traditions um and i i want to maintain that well i i agree with you there a lot actually i think we can learn so much from you know traditional values um yeah. christianity and mm-hmm. a lot of people want to you know chuck everything away but what what actually got us this far and what is the bedrock of so much and people growing up today who are young they think they can just dismantle everything and it's like hang on we, we got a situation now where you know people are getting divorced in droves people having abortions in droves whatever it is 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 chance are it's doing horrendous in culture so it's definitely not working right now so i think it could definitely be a good idea to take a leaf out of what was working to an extent and there were you know bad things in history racism sexism yeah um mm. but there's also like this kind of modern traditionism so like, i wouldn't say i would classify myself also as a traditionist maybe not as much as you but like I, like i think um i'm all for women's rights you know the right to vote i think mm. i completely support that mm-hmm. but it's also not meaning you know promoting degeneracy and all of that which we see kind of nowadays i think yeah um absolutely and i think it's almost ungrateful in a way to reject like you said what has got us this far um and there are there are ways of fixing or keeping um the progress that we've made in terms of like you say women's rights or civil rights there are ways of keeping that progress without chucking everything else away and there are things currently encroaching on that progress that we need to pay more attention to and views that would have been seen as progressive in say the 50s or 60s like women's rights like keeping men out of women's sports um you know saying that women should have their own sports category and and that that category should be recognized with equal importance to the men's category was something we had to fight for and now it's being taken away under the name of progress and that is just that that's what we need to be paying attention to completely agree uh keep you know keep out keep your eye out for people who preach uh progressivism but use yeah. regressivism to do it um what's exactly. your what's your biggest well deep question but what's your biggest inspiration in life Um, that is, that is a big question. Um, I think there's, there's a lot to be inspired by. Interestingly, when you asked me that, I looked up 
and I went straight to this, which is, can you see that? Yeah. That's my granddad, fireman. Um, he would have been traditionally very labor, um, you know, a working man. Um, and yet I feel that he would totally support me in everything that I'm doing right now because labor isn't labor anymore and conservatives aren't conservatives anymore. And at the end of the day, what we need is realistic values that are going to support our country in being strong. Um, and that is what that is what a lot of that generation, I think, um, support us in. I, I get a lot of support from people of that generation and they say they're so glad that I am carrying that forward in my generation yeah there are very few of us but we're we're doing it um yeah i think i think i would say that 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 generation inspires me a lot because they have such a fantastic attitude um and they they have a lot of experience that we need to be listening to you know people dismiss them they say well you just think that because you're old you're like old-fashioned and I think no they think that because they've experienced all sides of the cycle you know they went through the 60s where things were kind of progressing in one way and then it completely swung back the other way and they've they've seen all sides of the problem i guess and so i think their perspective is really really valuable wow yeah does that answer your question at all yeah no no it's brilliant um and that's like you know what you said about your um sorry you say your granddad yeah that's my granddad yeah granddad like that that's classic example you know what used to be a labor support was <clears throat> politically incorrect working class mm. union guy pretty much that that was kind of the embodiment of what labor used to be now it's you know someone who's on a university campus with 20 genders and pink hair that that's the embodiment of modern day leftism and it's it's so tragic to yeah. just see the downfall of something like that and that's you know really fun what you said about <clears throat> like your inspiration is tradition within itself of you know yeah. looking back on old cultures what do they do right um, and taking value from it and it's so important it, we see it you know all the time day to day from things like I, I see it all the time and I speak I'm the this is the radical English gentleman podcast and like it's one of the things I talk about a lot where the tradition of gentleman culture has gone because we're so anti anything traditionism and you see it on the train mm -hmm. on the tube wherever you are you know mm -hmm. people aren't gentlemen or like or you could argue the same with being a woman but I guess that's for you <laughs> to say um like in a sense would you say yeah, I think definitely there's um, on either sides, whether you think of it as being a gentleman or being ladylike, there's a lack of composure um, that I think it used to really sort of lend credit to us as a society. Um, just like the way that we treat each other. Um I think you're absolutely right. That has really gone downhill. And you can label it as being a gentleman, being ladylike. Um, and people are unhappy with those labels. But I completely agree that, that there is there has been a decline in the sort of manner that we treat each other with um, as strangers. I mean, I, d I don't have any problem with being kind of, you know, free and yeah, carefree among the people you're close to. But when it comes to conducting yourself in public and interacting with strangers with equals who you don't know, you do need to have that sort of respect. And if you're not, if you kind of display a lack of self-respect, how, how are you going to respect anyone else? Mm. Um. Also, I had uh, something else when you when you were talking about having inspiration from the past. It kind of made me think, like, if you ask an artist or a musician, who like 
what they're inspired by, they'll name an artist from the past. That you you can't really look to the future for inspiration because it isn't there yet. You have to build on what's already there. Oh, like you can do something quote. new with it. You can make it your own, mm. but you you have to respect who came before you. Amen. And you can take on elements of what they've done and and still move forward with it. Definitely, definitely. Like that is a brilliant, brilliant quote. I'll try and capture that into a graphic or something. <laughs> um, that was amazing. Um, well, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I think a lot of people listening who you know tuning in, like who will be um, you know w- young women, 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 mm. young women. There we go. Always <laughs> mess up. Um, they they'll be kind of taken back because I'm sure there will be some listening who do think similar views to you but are in this absolute madness of a world where, mm-hmm. you know, they're on Instagram, they're on TikTok and they think that yeah. they're some sort of lunatic when actually they're the people who are normal and it's just everyone else is the lunatic. Yeah. Um, but it's easy to think unless you know of the people that you're the lunatic, um, like yeah. you really are. And I, I love, I love just like older things. Like the way I dress is kind of older. I love suits. I, like I love just the old way. I think you can't be like you know um just the old traditional way of dressing i think is just elite yeah. it's absolutely elite <laughs> absolutely yeah um, definitely but thank you so much for coming on um do you have like any last words anything you want to say to i don't know young men women anyone um no i mean i agree with you that um it can be so easy to feel alone um especially if you're on social media and you're seeing you're being shown, I'd rather say, you're being shown all of these views that are attacking your own. Um, but we are out there. We are. We can sort of get together and communicate with each other and get our message out there in return. And, um, yeah, I'd, I'd just say that everyone who is doing the sort of stuff that we're doing, carry on and... Um, come and join the heritage party <laughs> brilliant plug there 100% um thank you <laughs> and yeah thanks for coming on it means means a lot because i know like your homeschooling stuff um mm. it's very busy so i really do appreciate your time and also thank you to everyone who has listened really do appreciate it love you all um where can people catch you or the heritage party or Uh, So the Heritage Party, uh, the manifesto is online. Um, The Twitter handles would be Heritage Party UK or um, Heritage Essex. My own Twitter, I actually, is Eloise Schultz underscore. I had to look that up quickly. Um, My own Twitter is Eloise Schultz underscore and my Instagram is LSchultz1. Brilliant. Yeah, definitely check that out. Link in the description. Listen to Spotify, Apple. Yeah, thanks so much, Cobra. Again, uh, give it the five stars if you're listening on Spotify. It means so, so much. And I will catch you all next week, Thursday at six o'clock. It's been an absolute pleasure and peace.